Thursday. And I'm sure that that they would like that to get people. Call this for a city council meeting Monday, October 28th. To order will dispense with the formalities and move to a roll call. Ms. Phillips, we do roll call, please. Mr. Richard Bailey? Here. Mr. Craig Mashburn? Here. Mr. Gary Stewart? Here. Mr. Mike Ashburn? Here. Mr. Patrick Stewart? Here. Before we do the adoption of the agenda, I'd like to go over it. Uh, the first item was the library board appointments. The second one is the award, the award the bid for the landfill maintenance building. Third is surplus the fire on the property. Fourth is there for grants. Uh, number five is the budget amendments from 2018 to 2019. Number six is the water sewer and gas franchise agreement. Uh, seven is 90% of the 2019 2020 budget. And number eight is the shared economic development for the Hutton development. So with that being said, I have a motion to approve the agenda. I make it motion. I have a second. Second. Any discussion? If not, we'll vote. All in favor say aye. Aye. I'll put it say no. Mm -hmm. Go to item number three, approval of the previous minutes from October 16, 2019. Do I have a motion to approve those minutes? I make that motion. I have a second. Second. Any discussion? If not, we'll vote. All in favor say aye. Aye. I'll put it say no. There is no old business, so we'll go to new business. First item is the library board appointments, Ms. Phillips. We had announced two terms that had expired already, and we took applications through October the 25th. But last week, um, Carrie Bradford resigned from the library board, so I would just like to leave those, leave it open for someone to apply, and then do do all three appointments at one time. So the deadline now will be November 4th at 4.30 p.m. Okay. Thank you. Go to item number two, um, <clears throat> which was the award the bid for the landfill maintenance department. It was recommended by the bid review committee to be awarded to Jimmy Trailer Construction and Rainsville as the lowest responsible bidder that messed up. Specifications that bid came in at $193,350, but there were two additions uh, one for $3,500 for uh, insulation, and then one for $12,899.70 for the rolling doors. So, with that, do I have a motion to approve? <coughs> so, a motion that needs to award the bid to the lowest responsible bidder for $193,000. <clears> Three <throat> fifty, and authorize two change orders for thirty-five hundred and twelve thousand eight hundred ninety-nine dollars and seventy cents. Thank you. So that being said, do I have a motion to approve that? I make a motion. I have a second. Second. Any discussion? If not, we'll vote. All in favor say aye. Aye. No. Opposed say no. Item number two, surplus fire department. This was to surplus the old extrication tool and trade it in towards the purchase of the new one. Do I have a motion to approve that? I'll make it motion. Uh, second. Second. Any discussion? I uh, will vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Item number four are airport grants. One was 100%, another one was 95%. I have a motion to approve those grants. I'll make that motion. I have a second. Second. Any discussion? If not, we'll vote. All in favor say aye. Aye. We'll say no. Item number five of the budget minutes, budget amendments from 2018-2019. Bear with me on this, because we have several. Uh, first one is airport lighting for 4,400. Golf cart for 1,000. 
pots for the square, three thousand. Main Street, twenty thousand dollars. Library appropriation, twenty five thousand. Tools for vehicle maintenance, four thousand. Second storm shelter, three thousand. Dozer for the landfill, two hundred thousand. Retcom ceiling, thirteen thousand nine hundred dollars. The IDB, eighteen thousand dollars. Welcome to Scottsboro signs, thirty thousand. Uh, twenty twenty Montgomery and DC chamber trips, two thousand dollars. City Hall electric upgrade, electronic upgrade, fifteen hundred. Landfill drone and software and training, twenty one thousand. EMA, three thousand. That came to a total of three hundred fifty five thousand dollars. Three hundred fifty five thousand eight hundred dollars. So that do I have a motion to approve that budget amendment? I'll make the motion. Are those budget amendments? Do I have a second? So any discussion? If not, we'll vote on favor. Say aye. Aye. Opposed to none. Item number six, water, sewer, and gas franchise agreement. Mr. Kimmer. <clears throat> the motion would be to authorize and direct me to prepare uh, an ordinance form a new franchise agreement based verbatim on the old franchise agreement extending the current for now 30 years. Thank you. Do I have a motion to authorize Mr. Kimmer to do that? Make that motion. I have a second. Second. Any discussion? Not will vote all in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, uh, go to <coughs> number seven. <clears throat> approval approval of 90% of the 2019-2020 budget, which is $19,801,869. I have a motion to approve that. I'll make that motion. I uh, second. Second. So, any discussion? I just want to thank everybody for participating in getting this done. If there's not any other discussion, we'll vote. All in favor say aye. Aye. Uh -huh. Go to item number eight, the shared economic <coughs> Shared sales tax used for economic development with the Hutton Group. Motion would be to authorize the city to enter into a 772 amendment 772 agreement uh, with the Hutton Group under option whatever. Okay. President, I'd like to uh, request a roll call vote. Okay. So let's make sure we have a roll call. So do I have a motion to approve a 772 amendment? Under the option, did you want to make an option? Mr. I'll make a motion that we take option two. So I have a motion for option two. Uh, 400,000 400, over, over, over five years. Okay. Do I have a second to approve that option? A second. Any discussion? One other thing, um, you know, it just it, it pains me to see, you know, the roads the way they are, and uh, that we've got a plan. I mean, we've got a recommendation on where those red lights need to go, and uh, you know, one being on Byron Road, which is detrimental for that church, Trinity. The other one at the end of uh, Access Road at Blake Rights, where his insurance agency is. You know, that falls within the criteria and the standard, but I've got this is the report right here, and uh, that's you know that's all I got to say. The reason I chose option two, it appears to me that we will be receiving additional sales tax from this uh, new business that will be going here that would help pay for this initial uh, four hundred thousand. Any other discussion? If not, we'll do a roll call vote. Ms. Phillips, will you do that, please? Mr. Richard Bannon? Yes. 
Mr. Greg Mashburn? No. Mr. Gary Stewart? Yes. Mr. Mark Ashburn? Yes. Mr. Patrick Stewart? Yes. Pastor of Trinity Baptist Church here in Scottsboro. I'm here representing members of that church and I'm here to voice support for a traffic light at the intersection of Byron Road and Highway 72. I understand there are thousands of vehicles that do pass that intersection on a regular basis uh, daily. Mr. Mashburn, you spoke to the matter. You may have the exact numbers of uh, the, the number of vehicles that uh, pass there every day. But it is a very difficult situation for uh, the members of our congregation. It's difficult to access Highway 72 from uh, Byron Road. Uh, if one is going to turn to travel east uh, or to cross over to travel west back toward Huntsville, it's very difficult to ascertain what uh, lane that vehicles are in. So oftentimes you have to wait until there's a total clearing to be able to access uh, Highway 72 because of that, uh, because of that danger. And uh, I know that you do not have the authority to determine actually where red lights are installed on state highways, but I am here just to express our concern and our interest in a traffic light being placed there for the safety of the members of our congregation. Oftentimes, uh, members, including myself, are traveling back streets to access a traffic light to get onto Highway 72, which is an inconvenience. And not that I'm opposed to inconvenience, but it does take uh, some extra minutes uh, to get onto uh, the highway. And sometimes, I, as a pastor, uh, maybe needing to get to uh, Huntsville, to a hospital, or even to the local hospital here. I need to get onto Highway 72 oftentimes very quickly. And sometimes I may have to, or I may be detained as a result of that, unless I do uh, travel back streets, which includes uh, uh, more time to do so. So I'm here just to, uh, just to again, voice the support for members of our of our church realizing again that you do not have authority over it but just asking you to offer your support to the state uh, for a traffic light uh, there in that location. And thank you for hearing me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Try not to take up too much of your time. I'd like to speak with you or share some information with you on our Scottsboro Public Library. I want to thank the council for the budget amendment. Uh, the amount that you have given us will make up for a shortfall in our budget uh, for, that will be used for books. Uh, we have a grant that we normally get, uh, but we will not be getting it that this year that we use strictly for the purchase of books. Uh, to lose $20,000 in funds would surely cripple what we can do as far as purchasing books for all uh, of our patrons, all types of media uh, that we use. So we were very appreciative of uh, that budget amendment for the library. Uh, I wanted to share with you one of the events that we had on Saturday at the library. It's the Halloween season. Um, I was very fortunate to be able to work during that event. We had over 700 parents, grandparents, and children come through the library uh, during the four hours that we were open uh, that got to see our decorations in the library. They got to uh, trick or treat. They got to play games. They got to uh, do pumpkins. We had over 300 pumpkins that were painted and children were allowed to take those home. 
So we provide programs uh, from the generous contributions that you give us to help support the library. Uh, they're very valuable <coughs> to our community and to the people that we serve. And we want you to know how appreciative we are of what you do for our library. Not only you as council people, but our street department, our uh, <coughs> department. Uh, anytime that we have a need, they are there. They go over and beyond what uh, is asked of them in time. And I want you to know how much we appreciate Mr. Moore, his crew, and Mr. Stacy Level, and his crew there. Uh, but we really appreciate what you do. On behalf of the Heritage Center, uh, I wanted to share some information. Uh, and I've talked with you a while about where we are standing on our project. We had a good meeting with Jim Molinese today, uh, the building committee with him, and we're working and moving forward with that project. Uh, we have been very fortunate that the public has been generous with donations, and we have a little over 107,000 of our 175,000 goal that we have met. We are very appreciative of the support that we have had from individuals and the commitments that they have made. We've been disappointed in the um, commitments, the donations, the interest from a lot of our professional people, our doctors, lawyers, um, dentists, those professional people and extremely disappointed in our industries here in town and throughout the county. We're not seeing support from them or from our local bankers that we thought that we would see. So we're hoping that in the coming months uh, that we will see more interest uh, in our project and in what we do as a member of this community and uh, the service that the Heritage Center provides <coughs> to the community. Um, I wanted to, uh, Mr. Kenner, if you don't mind holding up that book, I wanted to share a little bit of uh, some, some, uh, some historical records that we have had an opportunity uh, to have access to. Back, from what I understand, in the 1970s, before the Heritage Center was even uh, dreamed about, I guess, or, or came to fruition. Apparently there was some housekeeping that was done at the uh, courthouse, and a lot of documents were put into a dumpster. A Good Samaritan rescued uh, ledgers. These are uh, Jackson Circuit Court ledgers. This one is from 1892. Had a good Samaritan not seen those going into the dumpster and rescued what was put in there, they would be lost to us. That good Samaritan got out everyone, I'm assuming, that was put in the dumpster that day. And they stayed with that person until they were given or transferred to another person uh, down the line. That person died, and these became a part of the estate. There was the third person who knew of the existence of those and had tried to get those for years and was not able to. When they came available through the estate, that person was able to get 50 of those books. Mr. Kenner estimates they weigh about 30 pounds apiece. They are in excellent condition <coughs> as far as the inside of those. This one was in a consignment shop here in town. There were two that were placed there. One was purchased and someone in the consignment shop saw that one, recognized the historical significance of it, and called the director of the Heritage Center and told her about it. She immediately locked the door and went to the consignment shop and purchased that. After going through it, 
and getting in contact and having several conversations with the person who has those. The Heritage Center has made an agreement or entered into an agreement with that person to purchase the remaining 48 of those books to be housed at the Heritage Center. And they date from the early 1820s, 1820s or earlier through the late 1890s. Mr. Kemmerer has found information in there about his grandfather, great-grandfather, and that particular book. That's the purpose of our Heritage Center, is to preserve, protect, and share the information that is contained in those types of documents. That relates not only to the judicial system, to the community, to the people and the citizens who lived in this town and in the community surrounding and the activities that occurred judicially and that led to the recording of that. The Heritage Center serves as the <coughs> repository and the sharing. It's used by researchers, it's used by genealogists, and it's something that had not been rescued, would have been lost forever. It is amazing to me that people take upon themselves to discard public records in that manner. And I believe that Mr. Kenner made this uh, remark that that's not lawful. That's correct. We appreciate the opportunity to have, to have those records, to have them in our Heritage Center, to be able to share them with the people in this community, in this county, and throughout the nation because we have researchers from all over the world that come to us and look at these documents and the things that we have. And it is with your support, the councils, and your allocation that you give us and what you have done to help us expand our facility that will also include space, allowing us to have space to put records like these. That we thank you for what you do and the things that you have done to help us do what we need to do for our community. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Go to reports, Mayor. Uh, one thing, uh, Assistant Municipal Judge, we can um, announce that to you. for the assistant municipal judge position through November the 15th at 4, 4.30 p.m. Anyone interested should apply on your to the city clerk's office. Anything else, Mayor? Uh, just appreciate the council and all the budget amendments that we did. I know we've been had a blessed year as far as sales tax and appreciate and I know the departments do. I can speak for them on all the Christmas gifts here. <coughs> sales tax appreciate that and thank you on the uh, shared the vote of confidence on the fact that's all I have to think Mr. Bailey I got a couple things uh, first of all I wanted to make sure I mentioned the uh, Halloween on the square this week uh, Thursday night 5 30 to 7 30 of course you know they're calling for rain and it, just in case of rain warehouse 207 is going to be used for that so Second thing is, uh, Pastor Griggs, appreciate you being here. You know, I, I live in that area and know how the traffic is. And we've talked about it before about the access road on the other side. Yeah. And I think we need to be serious about, you know, checking in grants and different things about extending the access road all the way to Byron Road. And, you know, having another way for those people to get in and out. So, that's all I have. I appreciate everybody coming out. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Mashburn. Uh, 
just keep uh, keep families in prayer. Uh, you know, Felix passed away. We definitely want to remember his family. And uh, co-worker of mine's brother passed away this weekend, kayaking in the uh, Little River. And that's, that's been really tough on our families. So just keep, keep those families in your prayer. Thank everyone for coming out. Thank you. Mr. Ashton. Also, I would just like to mention that uh, Keith and <coughs> Felix Jackson's family and friends in your prayers. They uh, worked with Felix for five years. He's a, he's a good director. He's a good man. And he's a good friend. Thanks a lot. Mr. Stewart. Uh, no, just thank you enough for coming. Um, we appreciate y'all caring enough to be here. I have a couple of things. Uh, on uh, our next meeting on November the 4th will be a work session and a council meeting. We will not have one on November the 11th for observation of Veterans Day. And then we'll have another work session council meeting on November the 18th. So put that in your calendars. We hope to see everybody here on the days as well. But uh, just to kind of reiterate about well, Felix, uh, he was here a couple of weeks ago. Three weeks ago, at one of our budget meetings, and he did know. Yeah. Met a finer individual. Um, always had a smile on his face. Um, never met a stranger. Um, so just keep his family in your thoughts and prayers as well. Um, just appreciate everybody coming out tonight. And um, with that, do I have a motion to adjourn? You make that motion. I have a second. Second. Any discussion? I will vote. All in favor say aye. Aye.